it's time to tell the truth about how physics killed imagination. If you believe more energy out than in cannot be possible, you're a liar. Idiot. Okay, let's take a look at this. We're going to answer the question. Is it possible to put more energy out than you put in? We're going to say the questions because looking at all this right here, we're going to answer the question as truthfully as we possibly can. While those two are offline because I can put those 2000 watt tie grid inverters back into this system. But right now, this is good enough. Again, if you take it by the literal sense, can you put more energy out than you put in directly? The answer is no. But can you put more energy out at a time? Now, that's what we have to explain. Because if we go down here and we look at this, this battery is charged with that wattage. You see that? That's going to stay basically the same. It's going to go into these batteries, which are deep cycle, 100 amp batteries. Okay? Which these two right here are inverters, which you see the name right there, pure sine wave inverters. You see that plugged in and that plugged in, which is this one and this one, and then this down here is plugged in, which is that one over here, which sometimes we use for something else. But we attached those three to these tie grids right here. And as you can see the number, so I want you to write down these numbers. Okay. And let's go to the next one. And let's go to the next one. Okay. So we have three numbers. I wrote them down because they are fluctuating back and forth. You see... 280 and stuff so again we wrote down just what we seen at the time on the system okay and we come up with the number 787 okay you may get a different number that's because it's moving around like that it's moving around see how that's going up we didn't calculate the 191 we calculated one of the lower numbers and that one moves a little bit, but not much. There you go, it moved. Okay, so you see pretty much that's what it's putting out. Okay, but they all come from one set of batteries. Okay, so we put this into the grid and we're getting 787 watts out of the grid that means this is what's going into the grid okay but not for very long because eventually those batteries will drain and I'll have to cut the, the system off now here's one of the things this goes upstairs I hit a button it turns that off I can turn it off from here and the same thing for right here I turn it off okay then it charges up with this and then it takes a long time to go back into the batteries and recharge the batteries. But right now, while I'm running this, I go upstairs and I cook using the microwave, using the coffee pot for tea and coffee and things like that. All this 700 watts goes back into the grid while I'm using all the high energy things like hair dryers, what's names, anything that uses high voltage okay and so far for this month 
we put that back into the grid. Let's blow that up a little bit. We're putting that back into the grid. Okay, so at the end of the month, I can look at that number and says, I put this back into the grid. You guys got to do the numbers. You got to look at this and you got to understand how we get that boost, which comes from batteries. And once you understand those boosts and, that, and the way the battery operates, you'll understand two factors. What they say about more power out than in it breaks the laws of physics is correct under certain conditions. But once you store that energy right there at that level into these batteries, then these automatically, the way these work, will drop down drastically, okay, it, because the batteries are full. It means that when you... Side note, the 359 watts that we're using coming out of the grid is on only for this demonstration. We turn it off, it has its own switch, so it does not use that power up from the 700 and something watts taken out or going back into the grid from the tie grids. We have to let you know because people are idiots and they're saying we're using all the power. Thank you. Release this back into the grid and you using the items that are off when this system is off, like the microwave, like the coffee pot, like the blender, okay? Anything like a heat gun. I said a, a hair dryer, but a heat gun. All that right there will be consumed by all three of these. And then when this is turned off, so are those appliances. So it's huge is usage. So even if they get numbers to prove that they're correct about the science, when you get your bill in, you're going to have a lower bill. And then you wonder why all this is happening if you're breaking the laws of physics. Thank you. That's a simple little answer that I wanted everybody to know because you have a lot of idiots out there who's never going to tell you that facts about how you can break the laws of physics or bend them to your will. And it's all about time, batteries, which Nikolai Tesla used, and then the usage in which you, at the time you're using something. So right now this system is on, is because of what? I turned on the coffee pot. I just hit a button, which, which this cord turns this off and on. RV technology uses this type of stuff because this stuff is normally stared into an area they can't access, so they have to use this thing to turn this off and on. So this right here, that button will turn off, and they only use with the energy they need. And then guess what? The little bitty solars that don't really put out a lot of watts, okay, that's less than 400 watts, will fully charge these batteries up before the end of the day, or the alternator, okay? So again, if you see what's putting put out, okay, and then you see what's being put in, and you do your calculation with your bill, you make all those high appliances that soak up a lot of energy invisible to the people who charge you money. So stop listening to people who are just plain stupid or they just don't want you to know the truth on how to lower your bill. I'm out. Busted.